What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over Spaj EOO rectangles. Basically, you're just given n rectangles with side 1 and you want to count how many different rectangles can be formed with these squares. And um, two rectangles are different if none of them can be rotated and moved to, the, to obtain the second one. So like if you had like this square, uh, this rectangle, right, but side 2, like this one right here, if you were to rotate it, top like that that's still the same uh rotate it to the top like 90 degrees where now it's vertical it's still going to be the same rectangle right so that's why we're not we're not going to consider that as like two different rectangles so during a uh, rectangle con construction you can neither deform the squares nor, nor put any squares upon each other so yeah that's basically um to do this problem, it's actually, you have to just figure out each test case and just keep like drawing out every single test case to see how it goes on. And then you would find the pattern when you keep drawing it out. But anyway, um, you could look at this. You could look at the first test case. The first test case is six. So we have six rectangles. And you could see how many different, well, not, not six rectangles, six, uh, six squares. We have six squares with side one. And we want to count how many rectangles there are how many different rectangles there are, right? So this is, there's six on this side. There's six, six squares. And you could stack them up right next to each other for all of them to the right. So we have this one here, two here, three here, four here, five here, six here, right? If you just stack every single square to the right, you're gonna get six different rectangles here. But you also have to consider like, okay, squares are technically still rectangles. So here we have uh, if you were use two side length two and two by two, this is a, this is a rectangle also, right? And then if you concatenate two, another two vertical ones to the right, you would have this, this is also a rectangle as you can see here. So, um, yeah, the total here would be eight. So if you want to do this problem, you actually have to draw it out, draw, draw out every single possible, every single possible thing and find the pattern. So if you were to draw out, let's say that we have the number of squares we have is one, right? So we only have one square. How many different, let's just count how many different squares we could possibly make because before you count rectangles, because squares are like its own individual thing. Squares are rectangles, right? How many different squares can we make? Okay, because once we figure out the number of squares, we could figure out the number of rectangles we can make also. So let's think about it. Let's say I have only one square here. Well, the different number of different squares are just gonna be one, right? It's, itself right one square because you only have one square and you only have itself so if n is equal to one your your answer would number of different squares is one now let's think about two right let's say i have two different one by one squares um the number of different squares you can make is still going to be one right we're talking about squares different squares um the reason why it's only one is because you only can make one square here like uh, this and this are still technically the same square so yeah we only we only can have a one by one square so it's still going to equal to one now let's look at three if n is equal to three uh so we have three different one by one squares uh how many different squares can you make you still can only make one right number of squares squares uh different squares number of different squares. Uh, you only still can make one because these are still technically the same square, right? They're all the same square, so it's still gonna equal one. Okay, now, now it starts getting strange when you have four. Okay, so now we have four of these tiny squares, one by one squares. You can make one square like this, and then the second one you can make is actually a two by two square. So you have, Two different squares, actually. Two different squares. Because you only have, you have one, one by one, and then you have two by two. And this would use up all of the different squares if you merge them together. Put them together, you would get this, right? And this would, that means we have two different squares. So now let's look at, um, if we look at five, it's still going to be the same thing. Um, let's look at six. Six is going to be the same thing. Seven. Eight is still going to be the same thing. Let's look at nine, right? Now it starts getting very, very, very different. Okay. 
So now when you have nine, nine different one by one squares, you realize that you could actually make three number of different squares is actually going to, you could actually make three different squares. And the reason why is, is that you could actually have one square like this. You could have a two by two square like this, right? And you could have a three by three square. See? So these are three different squares. If you were to make out of nine small, tiny, small squares, you could make three of these. So yeah, this is going to equal to three. So then if you keep continue doing this, the number of different squares you can possibly make is going to actually end up if you find the pattern. So one is one, right? Two is going to be two. Now uh, two is going to be one. Three is going to be one. Uh, four is going to be two and so on and so forth until you get to nine and this is going to be three. So if you continue going forward, you realize this is actually going to be the floor of the square root of N floor. So rounded down when I say floor, it's rounded down. So this is going to be the square root of N and that will get, get you the number of different squares you need that, uh, that are added to create squares. So now let's talk about how to, do rectangles because rectangles are, are a little bit different. So remember squares are also rectangles. So if we find square number of squares, different squares, and then add it with the number of different rectangles, you're going to get the answer, right? So now let's talk about rectangles. All right, guys. So now let's think about how many different rectangles you could have counting because then, um, if we're excluding squares, we just count rectangles. Now, then you're going to, you'll be able to solve the problem. If you just add it by the number of squares, different, different squares. I mean, so let's say we have uh, n equal one. Well, if we just have one square, you, you can't form any rectangles because we're not going to, we're excluding squares, right? So this is the number of different rectangles, different rectangles. It's, you can't form any, it'll just be zero because this is not a, using this square, you can't form a rectangle like this. So in this case, if n equal to one, we're going to get zero. Now let's check if n equal to two, what would that give us? So you have two of these, you could have a uh, one by two, one by two, this is, a, this is a rectangle. And you also could have two by one, except this is the exact same rectangle, right? Because you could rotate it. So that's why we only count it once. So this is not going to be it. So this is going to be number of rectangles, different rectangles, number of different rectangles is going to equal to only one. Okay. So if n is equal to two, we only get one. Okay. Now let's look at another one. So let, let's write it. Let's rewrite here. So we have one to zero, two is just going to give us one. Okay. Now if n is equal to three, how many different rectangles can you have? You got to have one by two and one by three. And the rest would not matter because those, you could only rotate it, right? Like if you do two by one, that's just the same as one by two rotated and three by one still the same thing as uh, three by one by three rotated. So that's why this is if for three is just going to equal to two, right? So we only have two of these. Okay. Um, now let's continue. Let's continue. Let's do four. This is a little get. This gets a little bit more interesting. So in here we have, let's see. We have one by two, you get one by three, and you have one by four. And um, yeah, that's, that's the only thing you have. You could only form these because the rest of rectangles are just going to be the exact same thing, but rotated. So yeah, four, it would just be three. Okay. So now let's go back to original we have one zero. We have two is going to equal to two is going to equal to uh, one. Three was going to three was a uh, two. Four is three. Right. Okay. So now let's continue. Now we have five. If you have one, two, three, four, five. How many different rectangles you could have? You could have one by two, you get one by three. You could have one by four. 
and you can have one by five. Anything else you could try is probably not going to get you a rectangle because it's just the same thing rotated. So you have one, two, three, four. So n equals five, you only could have four rectangles, four different rectangles. Okay, so now let's look at a uh, final case of six. So let's look at the final test case of six. So if we have six different tiny squares like this, and then if we want to look at it, we have one by two, one by three, one by four, one by five, and then one by six, Okay, so that's uh, that's the different rectangles you could possibly have. Um, so yeah, we would only have n equal to five at this point, uh, not five. Uh, the different rectangles would be five because the rest you could only rotate it. So after doing all the doing all these calculations, let's just re rewrite it out and then see what the pattern is. So guys, I basically just redrew the whole counted all the different length by width of each different rectangle for the ones that we counted. So we have one, we had zero, two, we had a one by two rectangle. For three, we have one by two, a two by one, one by three, three by one. And these are just the pairs. Each of these are pairs and they count as one rectangle, but I just labeled the pairs anyway. And then for four, we have one by two, two by one, one by three, three by one, one by four, four by one. For five, we have one by two, two by one, one by three, three by one, one by four, four by one, one by five, five by one. For six, we have one by two, two by one, one, one by three, three by two, uh, three by one, one by four, four by two, one by five, five by one, one by six, six by one. Okay, so as we could see here that um, our ith value, the length, the length value here, this one, or the, the width, the width, the width value, my, my bad. The width value is actually just going to be at maximum of the square root of n floor of square root of n and we're actually just iterating it from one to the floor of square root of n for this one right because the square root of two uh six let's say the square root of six is, is the lower bound is going to be one right so that's what this width this uh width is representing right now the uh the jth value this one is actually just uh i plus one and we're just multiplying it when it's less than, if the area is less than or equal to the value of n. So as you can see here, one times two, this value two is less than or equal to five. So that's why this works. And then one times three, three is less than or equal to five. So that's why this one works. One times four, four is less than or equal to five. That's why this one works. One times five, five is less than or equal to five. So that's why this one works. So your j value of counting for different rectangles could just going to be i plus one. So for your i is going to equal to one to four square root of n, and your j is going to equal to i plus one and two, uh, while i times j is less than or equal to n. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much how this code is going to work, and then you're going to add count one every single time when uh, th th while this is this is this works this condition works. So yeah, I'm gonna go over the code now, and then uh, and then then um, after this whole thing is done, you add by the number of different squares, and that's just square root of n, floor square root of n. So let's go over the code now. All right, guys. So I'm gonna explain the code now. So first, we're gonna read in n, which is the number of uh, one by one squares, and then we have a count variables, which is gonna count the number of different rectangles and the number of different squares. So first we're gonna have our i value is gonna start from one and we're gonna go up to the square root of n and we're increasing one every single time. For j, we're gonna start from i plus one and we're gonna do it while the area of i times j is less than or equal to n. So if it is less than or equal to n, we're gonna increase j plus plus and then we're gonna increase our count by one because that's the only time when this matters, right? When the area is less than or equal to n, then we increase count by one, okay? 
And then after when this whole loop is done, these two loops done, so this one calculates the number of different of rectangles. When that's done, we have to add by the number of different squares. So like in the beginning I said, the number of different squares is going to be the square root of n. So we have to add. We have to add by square root of n, which is the number of different squares. And then we just print out the answer. So yeah, that's basically how you do this problem. You have to actually uh, come up with a pattern and then try to solve it. And then yeah, that's it. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later.